Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. I'm gonna level with you guys. You might not be able to buy one of these at the moment. We've heard every argument as to why we should make these videos, but we're still going to make them. Most people get it, we're a YouTube channel, we make videos, that's just what we do. There's a tiny vocal minority of people who just do not get it. Let me explain this really simply. We wanna share the performance with you when you will be able to get your hands on one of these. Simple as that. And with that said, MSI sent over one of their 6800 XT Gaming X chairs for us to check out. So we did what we usually did and we ran it through our regular suite of benchmarks in both Windows and Linux. And we wanted to see how this card stacks up against some other GPUs that we've had through the studio lately. Let's get right into it. As I mentioned already in the video, even though the video has just begun, the availability of these cards is basically, it's zero. And in Australia, well, there's no stock here as well. It's impossible to get your hands on. And I can kind of speak for the rest of the world based on what you guys have been saying in the comments. So yeah, actually seeing one listed online and actually getting your hands on one, they're two completely different things. But with that said, uh, as usual, there's a lot of data to unpack with this video. There are chapters in all of these type of videos. So if you want to jump to a certain section of a video where I talk about a certain benchmark or a certain feature, you can just mouse over the progress bar or check out the timestamps in the description. Also, again, just keep this in mind. Make sure you watch the whole video so you get the context of what I'm trying to say in this video. Now, again, as all, with all of our GPU videos, these are the out of the box figures and all of our GPU videos are designed this way because the vast majority of people just don't overclock their GPUs. And from all of the research we've done and the amount of time that we've had this channel, this is what basically everyone tells us. And this is indicative of all the data we've collected. And for people who wanna know how these overclock, I'm gonna come back to this in a separate 6800 XT benchmarking video. We've got a couple of them that we've tested and done some overclocking with. So once we collect a bit more data, then it will make more sense. And also we don't have any 6800s. We do have a 6900 XT now, but we haven't had time to test it yet. So when we test the 6900 XT, you'll have the comparison of this in that video. Anyway, let's check out these benchmarks, comparisons. These graphs are weighted based on the performance of the cards that we're not focusing on from our entire database. Now we, we changed the way that we did this slightly over the new year. We retooled all of the stuff that we do for benchmarks. So yeah, uh, we also use our regular benchmarking hardware. So everything that you're seeing that we ever do on the channel is always consistent because it's the same hardware. But again, when hardware releases that gets updated, we retest every GPU that we've got on hand to reflect those hardware changes. So we don't just like benchmark one GPU with the new hardware, we do everything all over again. All right, shadow of the tomb at a time. You can use that magic pause button to pause at any time during the video if you want to have a look at the graphs for a bit longer. Let's get into it. The first thing you're probably noticing is that at 1080p, the 6800 XT is equaling the performance of the 3080s we've tested, and more specifically, this MSI variant. As usual with Linux and the Vulkan performance, it's better at 1080p than Windows is, and this is usually the case that we're seeing across the board, both Nvidia and also AMD cards as well. So yeah, pretty standard stuff. But if we compare Windows versus Linux performance, again, I mean, we already said this, but Linux comes out on top, and this is pretty normal for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. At 1440p, we're seeing only a single frame difference between the reference 6800 XT and the Gaming X Trio. If we jump over to Linux, so we're seeing that at 1440p, the Gaming X Trio is beating out the reference card by only two frames per second. And if we compare Windows to Linux again, we're seeing Linux does in fact outperform Windows once again at 1440p. At 4K, we're seeing the performance equaling around where the reference card is. And in Linux at 4K, we're seeing the Gaming X Trio be a single frame slower than the ASRock 6800 XT that we checked out a little while ago. You can check out that video in the top right hand corner right now for comparison. All right, let's jump on over to superpositions the same way we always do it. We do three tests in total, 4K optimized, 1080p extreme, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. Now we sometimes get comments along the lines of why we use stock OpenGL versus DX11 for comparison. As usual, we're comparing the out of the box experience only. And this is kind of where it gets interesting. And we showed this with the ASRock card as well. So with that said, first up with the 1080p Extreme benchmark, this one is highly GPU bound. And we're seeing the 6800 XT Gaming Extra perform about the same as the reference card here. You guys ready for a bit of a plot twist? In Linux, the OpenGL version never performs as well, but that's what I would say if the ACO compiler didn't perform as well with the new firmware 
with the new Linux firmware rather, and the new kernel. The difference is completely night and day compared to the 6800 XT when we tested that at launch. And those are the numbers that you're seeing here. And we did that on purpose to show you that original driver difference, although we will be uh, retesting all of that again soon. Once we get through our 6900 XT stuff, then we're gonna uh, focus on all of that again. But if we compare Windows and Linux, you can see for like one of the only times that we ever see this is the Windows performance is pretty close to the Linux performance, which is, yeah, it doesn't usually happen that way, but you know, technology changes, right? At 1440p in Windows, the Gaming X Trio comes just behind the 2080 Ti and the reference card. But in Linux with 1440p and the new ACO compiler, the MSI and ASRock cards both destroy everything else by quite a huge margin. And again, like I already mentioned, this is telling me that we need to retest the AMD GPUs. And we're actually gonna do this with the new ACO compiler at a later date and also redo the 5700 XTs as well. Cause I wanna see how much more performance we're getting out of those older cards. Then if we compare Windows and Linux, we're seeing that for once Linux is coming out on top with superposition. At 4K in Windows, we're seeing the Gaming X Trio come in just behind the stack of 3080s. In Linux at 4K, the Gaming X Trio is beating out the 3080 only by a few frames, so not a huge margin here. If we compare Windows to Linux at 4K, we're seeing them perform within a few frames of each other. It's pretty close. All right, next up is Basemark GPU. Now, Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and Linux. It's pretty good for comparison, actually. At 1080p in Windows, the Gaming X Trio is about two frames faster than the ASRock card, which I'm actually quite surprised with because most of the time it's come behind it. So yeah, Vulkan is actually telling us a different story. In Linux at 1080p, the Gaming X Trio performs slightly faster than a 3070. So again, Vulkan is telling us a completely different story in Linux. At 1440p in Windows, it shows the Gaming X Trio coming in behind the reference 6800 XT. In Linux, we're seeing the same result being echoed with the Gaming X Trio and it coming right in behind the reference card. At 4K in Windows and Linux, we're seeing the same trend that we saw with 1440p as well. We ran our one hour stress test in Fermark and we couldn't get the MSI 6800 XT Gaming X Trio above 67 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. Compared to the reference card, the junction temperature was about 11 degrees cooler. And this is obviously to do with that much larger cooler on the Gaming X Trio. And I always mention this, but this is super important and make sure you note this that we're running on an open air test bench and the results in a closed system, they're just gonna be different from what we recorded here. We include this result because our open air test bench and our open air testing environment is consistent with everything that we've ever tested. So yeah, quite a good litmus test actually. Now we decided not to test with smart access memory because again, we don't have any provisions to have an X570 test bench set up and we're only seeing marginal improvements with smart access memory anyway, but you can check out our initial review of the reference 6800 XT if you're interested in SAM performance, and that's in the uh, top right hand corner right now. But we will revisit this when we can use resizable bar support with Z590, Intel 11th gen and PCIe gen 4. We actually wanna see what the differences are between those two chipsets and the way that AMD and Intel does it. But yeah, uh, if you've got an X570 board with the Ryzen 5000 CPU, there's no harm in enabling it. Otherwise, I don't think you're missing out on too much right now. I think it's gonna get a lot more interesting when Intel comes to the party to see what actually is the big difference here. And as far as power consumption at idle, it was only drawing around nine watts of power, which is much lower than the reference card. And we observed it hitting a board power draw, maxing out at around 264 watts at full load over a period of one hour. Actually, something pretty interesting to note is this is quite a bit lower than the advertised 300 watt board power. So not sure what's going on there. I did 
test this a few different ways and yeah. We also observed the gaming extruder to be near silent with a little bit of coil line over our testing period. I've heard other people say that these cards are loud. This card is not loud for coil wine. It's only audible if you're really listening to it. You have to remember as well, this is an open air test system and you're gonna hear absolutely every sound coming from the card. In a closed system, you probably won't hear this card at all. Now the reason why we do these acoustic observations rather than measuring the sound is because for a normal user, those numbers don't mean anything. So yeah, acoustics are only tangible if the system's sitting right next to you or under your desk or wherever you have your computer. Otherwise, those numbers just don't mean a whole lot to people who are actually looking to buy hardware. Like the reference card, it does use two PCIe power connectors. The overall side of the card is basically the same as the RTX 3000 based Gaming X Trio cards. It's a 2.7 slot card that measures around 324 millimeters in length. It's got RGB on the card as well, and it can be controlled in Mystic Light. It's actually got the same RGB setup that we're seeing on the Gaming X Trio 30 series cards because it's just quite similar with the way that they design these. And it's actually one of the only times that you're gonna see an AMD based card share the same design language as an Nvidia based card. I actually thought this was quite a good move from MSI because I don't mind the look of the new Gaming X Trio cards. As far as pricing for the MSI 6800 XT Gaming X Trio, it's going for around 849 US dollars or around $11.99 Australian dollars at the time of filming. Obviously, again, like I mentioned right at the start, this is subject to availability, which at the time of making this video is basically zero. Now, the biggest difference that I've seen with this card is the fact that for once, the Australian pricing is right on the money. And if you include the tax and the US price, the Aussie price and the US price are pretty much on parity with each other within a few dollars either way based on the current conversion rates. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. I don't have to whinge about the Australian pricing because it's, a, it's about the same. And it's actually like just completely off script here. It's one of the cheaper 6800 XTs. It's only about 50 or $60 more than the reference card, which I thought was quite interesting too. But what do you guys think about the MSI 6800 XT Gaming X Trio? I, I want to spend a bit more time with it and push it a little bit further. I think this one's going to be a bit of a cracker of a card. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think about it and let us know what it's going for in your region with a price conversion in USD. I want to know if you guys are getting the same deal that we're getting here in Australia because I'm just not sure. I couldn't really find much pricing because basically you can't buy this card. It doesn't exist. It's a unicorn. Yes, we get it. But I still want to know if you guys have prices because yeah, Unicorns can have prices too, right? Anyways, guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you hated the video, you know what to do. As usual, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. I want to show you something real quick, guys. Check this out, right? Oh, look, a double unicorn. Someone's going to complain about this, but here is the 3080 Gaming X Trio, and here's the 6800 Gaming X, 6800 XT Gaming X Trio, rather. Um, they look exactly the same, right? Like they, they're basically identical. Even like the, the design on the sides, like, oh man, I'm really awkward. What's wrong with me, Claire? But yeah, you can see, I mean, obviously the 3080's got three connectors. The, uh, the 6800 XT has two PCIe power connectors. Why am I so, I'm, I'm stopping this. I, I'm just looking awkward, like my hands don't work properly. <laughs> Uh, anyways, thanks for watching guys and enjoy whatever day it is that you're watching this. You have such an awkward channel. I know, I can't help it. I'm just so weird all the time. Weird. I'm just a weird person. That's okay. If pe when people meet me in person, they also think I'm quite weird and bizarre. It's okay. No one's ever said that to my face, but I can see the cringe on their face. I hate that word, eh? Uh, Claire. Cringe. <laughs>